Rolling edits are another really powerful tool, and if you've spent a little time exploring the toolbox, you'll find that there is a rolling edit tool that you can get to by typing the N key on your computer keyboard. But I'm going to show you how to use the rolling edit tool with the selection tool, and that's also accomplished by holding down specific modifier keys. So to show you where a rolling edit would be really effective, let's go to the very beginning of our sequence. So I have the sequence frame selected here. So when I type home on my computer keyboard, it's going to go right back to the beginning of our sequence. And the section that I'm going to be looking for is right after the handshake. If we watch it right now, the way that it's edited with just the in and the out points set at where the dialogue starts and stops, you'll notice that it feels a little bit stuttery. Mr. Rockwell? Thanks for grasping the nettle on this inspection. So for example, if we wanted to have a little bit more screen time for that handshake, what we can do is use a rolling edit. In other words, the timing between these two clips is perfect, except that we just want more screen time for this clip and not quite as much for this clip. Now, without any modifier keys held down, if you hover your mouse over the border between those two clips, You'll notice that depending on how close you are to one or the other, you'll get the trim handles. But what we want to do is make this section longer and this section shorter. And the slow way to do that is going to be to click this over here and then come back over here and drag that over there. And that accomplishes the goal, but there's a much faster way to accomplish that. So I'm going to hit the undo command a couple of times. And then I'm going to hover in between those two clips but where you position your mouse cursor is going to be really important for making these rolling edits. So I'm going to hold down Control or Command, and when I do, you'll notice that when I hover in the center, right in between the borders of those two clips, I get the rolling edit tool. It looks like two rows of arrows pointing to the left and the right. That's the rolling edit icon. So now when I click and drag between those two clips, you'll notice that the time or the duration in between the sum of both of those clips doesn't change. But what I am able to do is move the ending of the previous clip and the beginning of the next clip all at the same time. And that's what the rolling edit tool gives you. And in the program monitor, you're able to see the end of one clip and the beginning of the next clip. The end is on the left and the beginning is on the right. So you can drag that around and watch for where things are happening. So if you wanted to leave the handshaking on there right after that actor in the yellow sweater does his little uh, shoulder shrug, we can get to right about there. So now when we watch that edit, we'll see Mr. a little bit more screen time for that handshake. So that's the idea behind ripple editing, but there does exist now a problem with that edit. You see, all of the dialogue was recorded in these close-up angles and not on the wide angle. So if we watch this back and listen to the audio, we've got a bit of a problem. Mr. Rockwell, grasping the nettle on this inspection. See, we're missing some of the dialogue. So what I want to do is not necessarily have the audio and the video locked together in time when I make that rolling edit. So to do that, I'm going to hit the undo key one more time, and then I'm going to make the same kind of rolling edit by holding down the control or command key to get my rolling edit tool, but then I'm also going to hold down alt or option at the same time. So now I have control or command along with alt or option, and now when I make my rolling edit, as I click and drag, you'll notice that the audio is not going with that rolling edit. So I can roll this anywhere I want, but the audio will all stay in the same position. So now, if I get to about this point and lift off, let's watch the result of that edit. Mr. Rockwell, thanks for grasping the nettle on this inspection. So I want to make that edit last a little bit longer, so I'm going to hold down Control or Command along with Alt or Option and move that little rolling edit a little bit further to the right, and now let's watch the result. Mr. Rockwell, thanks for grasping the nettle on this inspection. See, so now the dialogue starts before we see the visual edit. So the rolling edit allows you to make some really nice refinements to your sequence timeline. And let's review a few of those things because I don't really like the way that's edited right now. 
So I'm going to hit Controller Command Z to undo a few times. And then I'm going to change the start of this clip because it's just a little bit of a pregnant pause for before the actor starts his line. So I'm going to hold down Control or Command to get that Ripple Edit tool. And I'm going to click and drag across there to shorten up that clip. And I just want to get right before he starts talking. And that will move everything else in the timeline a little bit earlier. And now I'm going to do a rolling edit in between those two clips so that I don't lose the audio. Because you can see the audio is perfectly timed right now. Mr. Rockwell, thanks for grasping the nettle. And now I'm going to use a rolling edit to move the video around a little bit. So I'm going to hold down Control or Command along with Alt or Option. And then I get the rolling edit tool. The audio is going to stay in place. But I just want to get right about there. That will split the video, leave the audio in place. Let's watch the result. Mr. Rockwell, thanks for grasping the nettle on this inspection. So that's how to make rolling edits with the selection tool. And next, we're going to talk about overriding some of the video.